and welcome everyone to another one of my videos. In this video I decided to, just like the lyrics already told you, show you different ways to create analog saw waves in Serum. And I will show you just what I mean in theory. So what you see here is a clean saw wave that always oscillates between minus one and one on the x and on the y axis perfectly. That is just one wavelength. This is a saw wave. But in the analog world, a saw wave looks different. And in order to emulate it, we have to make a sum of sine waves. For example, like this. We can say, okay, there is a sine wave, and then plus, there is another sine wave, but it's twice as fast, but also twice as quiet. And there is another sine wave where I use the number three instead. And there is another sine wave where I use the number Four. And it goes on and on like that and you can see it approaches a little bit of a saw wave here. We can make our lives easier by just writing a sum that goes from 1 to any number really. Let's say 4 and then in the sum's body we just write basically this. And as you can see now that created pretty much the same saw wave as before. And if I raise the number of iterations of the sum, so to say, to a higher number, you can see it approaches a saw wave even more and it has these nice little wobbly artifacts at the point where it flips from minus one to one. This is called a band limited saw wave and it has a smoother sound than a real saw wave because it is not edgy, but it is fundamentally smooth, fundamentally made of sine waves, while the clean saw wave theoretically has infinitely many frequencies at the point where it jumps from one to minus one, because it is impossible to be at two places at the same time. This is only possible in the realms of mathematics. Now, here we are in Serum where there is a formula parser and there we can also just write sine x pi. However, you have to make sure that you always write the multiplication operator because otherwise it will just not work. And now I can sum another sine wave onto it, like this. And now I have to wrap the entire thing into some brackets so that I can multiply them with a smaller number. And now I can add another piece of the sum, another one, just like I did in Desmos. And now I can raise this number again carefully, not too much not too much i said and we can see we are approaching the saw wave however this is a really slow process kind of tedious and we want to know if there are other ways to accomplish this sum because serum unfortunately doesn't come with something like a sum function where you can just enter a few arguments and then I don't know, it does the sum. Serum has a lot of functions and if you want to know all of them, then I can highly recommend checking out the manual. Ah yes, it is on page 304 and there you can read all of the functions that you can use in the formula parser. Unfortunately, a sum is not part of it. So how do we accomplish a sum of sine waves that resemble a saw wave? Gladly, I'm an official beta tester of Serum 2. So whenever there is a problem or feature request or something, we can just drop it in the group and then it is being discussed. Here I started a discussion about a sum function for the formula parser. And I got two answers actually, one by Oiko who presented me this cryptic looking formula and one formula by Steve Duda himself that are supposed to solve this problem somehow. So let's check out what these functions are doing. Maybe we can play around with them and find new ways to twist them. Okay. All right. So this formula correctly created an analog saw wave and it's even already normalized. So this is a really good method. What happens if we raise this number to, I don't know, um, 50? Okay, then we still got an analog saw wave, but more accurate even. In the Serum Formula Parser, we can use the letter Y to describe something that should happen throughout the whole wave table. So here I could just go ahead and say one plus Y times 128 or something, whatever. No, that was not right.
Yeah, and now it works. Now every other table gives me one more except for the first two for some reason. And now that we have a wave table like that, it converges to a saw wave pretty quickly, but it still looks pretty cool. We can use an LFO. Nice, so that is exactly what I expected an analog saw wave to do, to just give me a smoother type of saw wave. Now what else can we twist about this function? What does this 1 divided by q thing do? Why is it not 2 divided by q? Oh, interesting. So now we got something where the sine waves are kinda staying at the zero crossing for a little bit longer before going up. So I assume this is going even harder when I raise this number. Yeah. So for this thing we can also think to ourselves like what happens if we just add 1 plus z times I don't know 8 or something and now this will get stronger throughout the wave table and give us more edge. What does that sound like? Cool, kind of a laser tone, I like that. What do we get from this to the power of 1? Okay, if we don't use 0.5 but just 1, we get something that does not really converge towards the saw wave a lot anymore, or maybe a little bit, but kind of less sharp. What if we choose a lower number than 0.5? I like that. And then I got a new wave table that sounds a bit like an analog saw wave but with our own little twist to it. Now let's actually try the term that was dropped by Steve Duda himself. Yeah, it is also a great normalized analog saw wave. Oh, this actually already uses the Z, so I suppose this already produces different saw waves throughout the spectrum. Oh yeah, he had the same idea. He wanted to make something where you can move through the wave table. Clean as fuck. You can find these terms in the video description, so if you want to play around with them, you can do that as well. Okay, so I decided to go back to that easier looking formula to just inspect how it works. And there are two components to this thing. First of all, I see a certain syntax here that I know from C++ and I'm going to explain that to you. There is this question mark and this double point or whatever it is called in English. And that means that this is a condition. So it says like, is this a thing? Is Q smaller than 24? And in that case, do this and else do this. But then we can ask what does it even mean for Q to be below 24 or equal. And in order to find that out, you can read the manual. So when a Q is present in the formula, the function plots to the FFT bins instead of plotting to the waveform display. So that means that whatever you are describing down here is not describing the waveform, but the thing up here. Note that Q iterates from one to 512 for the respective harmonics bins and that just means that you can only create 512 harmonics because that is the amount of harmonics that is shown up here as you can see bin 512 
is the last one. So let's play around with this a little bit. If I type 25, then we get another bin up here, as you can see. So that works. And now if I raise this number from zero to, let's say 0.1, then you can see all of the other bins that have been zero before now have their own value, which is a really low value. And it changes the waveform drastically because now all of these partials have a little bit of sound, even though they were silent before. And it's a very quiet sound, but it kind of adds up. So let's put that back to zero now. And instead, just look at what does this other term mean? One divided by Q to the power of 0.5. So let's only look at one divided by Q for now. And we can see that results in a shape that looks a little bit like a sine wave, but not quite. And it's this spectral shape where, you know, it is falling and then it approaches zero. And that makes sense because if we go to Desmos and just type in one divided by X, then we also get a shape that falls and then approaches zero. And if you were to look at a saw wave in a spectrogram, you would also see harmonics that continuously go lower in volume. That's why you describe it with sine waves that are being divided by smaller and smaller numbers over time. So yeah, apparently when you are doing this and then also to the power of 0.5 then it already creates something like a saw wave, even though it doesn't have this other step, this band limited kind of step. But this is what you would get if you try to compose the saw wave from all of the bins. And now we can be a little bit more methodical about that than we were before. And now we can actually say, okay, I want this Z value to be multiplied with 512. So we choose 511 because we already start at one. And now we can get truly to the highest resolution analog saw wave that is possible in Serum. And it sounds like this. I really like the chirps that it adds to the high end. So yeah, there is no sum function, but you can definitely make something like analog saw waves. Now here's the thing, in order to create an analog square wave, you would have to somehow ignore every other partial. How are we going to accomplish that is my current question. So yeah, we have this condition here that says, is Q smaller than this number? But now we will add another condition on top of that. Inside of this condition is modulo of Q with two the case. If yes, then this and else this. That didn't work for some reason. Yeah, this is supposed to gate every other number as you can see, so that that should definitely work. I just don't know if the mod function works like that in Serum. Maybe it has to be written differently. Could also be that it's this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and now I created an analog square wave, as you can see. Sweet analog square. And now the cool thing about that is that at this point we can experiment with things that are a little bit beyond the basic waveforms. Because now we can just say, okay, what if we want to gate every third value instead of every second one? Now we get whatever the fuck this is. That's really cool too. So yeah, how do we even call that? Analog square three, maybe going on with five Fibonacci numbers, you know. Sweet. Um, I don't want to make this video too long because this is much more fun when you do it yourself than when you just watch someone else do it. And I want to like encourage you all to just find joy in the formula parser the same way I do. Um, but yeah, this is just meant as a little guide. If you want to make sums and play around with sums, then this is the way to go.
in Serum 2.